What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I am going to answer the question, what strength reed should I use? What size reed should I use, which a more accurate question would be what strength reed should I use, is a question that pops up in my Instagram messages all of the time. Unfortunately, there is no 100% real answer to this question because the strength of your reed depends on a whole bunch of different variables from your saxophone to your mouthpiece to your ligature to how much air you put in the saxophone. So I can't tell you exactly what size or strength reed is gonna work specifically for you. However, in this video, I can help guide you along the path to help you answer that question for yourself. Before we dive into this video, I would like to tell you about a project that I have been working on for a long time. The Scott Paddock Sax School will be launching in early October of 2020. The Scott Paddock Sax School is an online subscription-based membership that is set up exactly the same way I teach private lessons. If you like my YouTube videos, then you are gonna love the Sax School. I break down all the information in the exact same way, except everything is in order, everything is way more in depth, and it gives you a direct line of structured lessons on how to get from where you are to where you wanna be as a saxophone player. So if you're tired of searching through YouTube to try and figure out how to get better at the saxophone, this is the spot for you. It's gonna tell you what to practice, how to practice, and what to practice next. So check out www.scottpaddocksaxschool.com for more information, and I will put a link in the description for this video. So let's talk more about saxophone reads. Now, there are so many different variables when it comes to saxophone reads that it's really tough to give an answer of what size reed should I use. And the reason for that is one, there's a whole bunch of different brands of saxophone reeds. And just like if you're trying on different shoes, if you try on a pair of Nikes, they're gonna fit different than a pair of Reeboks, which is gonna fit different than a pair of Adidas, which is gonna fit different than some dress shoes, which will fit different than some work boots. So when you're dealing with reeds, you've got all these different brands that have all these different styles that they're trying to focus their reed towards. So the first thing you need to do is figure out exactly what brand of reed that you wanna use and go from there. Because these reeds are also sized with all different kinds of sizing charts. For example, if you have a strength three of a Van Dorn Purple Box, that's not the same strength as a Van Dorn Jazz or a Van Dorn Java. So even within the Van Dorn family, the strengths are different depending on the type of reed that you're playing. And then when you get into synthetic reeds, those are completely different. And there's just so many different variables to deal with. So some of them size them by half steps, some of them size them by quarter steps, and some of them size them by soft, medium, and hard. So there really is no answer to what size reed should I use. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, that there's just so many different choices that all have different labels on them, let's talk about how you can figure out what works for you. When it comes to you individually, there are three types of reeds. A reed that's too soft, a reed that's just right, and a reed that's too hard. Now, if it's too soft, it can be way too soft all the way up to being close to right. If it's just right, then obviously there's like a little bit of area in there that's just right. And then if it's too hard, then it could be just a little too hard and way too hard. So if you break it down into those three categories, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Now, a really good starting point is use the reed that you've got on right now. If you're playing a saxophone and you have a reed, not reed right now, ask yourself, does this feel really good to play? Is it a little soft or is it a little hard? So let's describe what a little soft and a little hard means so that you can figure that out for yourself. When your reed is too soft, you're gonna have intonation problems, especially when you go up high. So it's gonna sound something like this. Did you hear how that pitch got really shaky and then way flat as I went up? Now I overdid it so that you could hear it, but that's what's gonna happen when you have a reed that's too soft. As you go up higher, the notes are gonna uh, get way thinner and they're gonna come out a lot flatter. So when we're talking about reeds, reed strengths, what we're really talking about is the resistance in the reed. In other words, how easy it is to make the reed vibrate. Now, again, there isn't a correct number that you should be playing. I play a 2.25 Legere signature, so that's actually a fairly soft read. So it's not that 
a hard read is better or a soft read is better. It all depends on your mouthpiece, your ligature, and your saxophone, and of course your read. So playing a three, a size three, isn't better than playing a size two or two and a half. It has nothing to do with what's better. It's with the, the whole idea is what fits the way you play the best. So if your read is too soft, your high notes are gonna sound really weak and you might be blowing your saxophone out. So when you're playing, your saxophone might shut down on you. So if your saxophone is shutting down on you or you just feel like you can't get any resistance, you can't get any pushback from your saxophone and when you push your, your saxophone hard, meaning that you're trying to play louder, your saxophone just won't give you any more volume, that probably means that your reed is too soft. So that means you wanna go up a little bit. Now, how much do you wanna go up? It depends on what kind of reed you're using. I use Legere signatures and they go in quarter sizes. So I would go from a 2.25 to a 2.5 or a 2.5 to a 2.75. It all kind of depends on where you are. If you're playing uh, Daddario uh, Jazz Select, you might go from a three soft to a three medium. So you're gonna kind of find your sweet spot and just move around the next size up or the next size down. So when you're too soft, the easiest way to figure it out is your high notes don't sound good and your saxophone might shut down on you when you're trying to blow really hard. Now the only good thing about a soft reed is that your low notes will come out fairly easily. The softer your reed is, the easier it is to get those low notes to come out, especially as a subtone. Now a reed that is just right does not mean it's a 100% great perfect reed. We're always kind of trying to balance what we want in our sound with how hard we can push the reed. So a really good read, a read that's just right, is one that makes your low notes sound really well. You have a lot of control down, down low. It makes your high notes uh, in tune and they have a lot of strength and depth to them and your altissimo notes will come out really easily. So when, you're, when you have that just right read, maybe one of those things is a little easier than the other. So you're just gonna have to kind of pick and choose which you prefer because you're really not gonna find a read that is just like the world's best low note read and the world's best high note read. You just kind of have to find that middle ground where and strength where everything plays really well. When a read is too hard, that's pretty easy to figure out because there's too much resistance. And when there's too much resistance, it's hard to get a tone and you wear out very quickly when you're playing. You have no stamina because the reed takes so much air to vibrate. So when you have a hard reed, if it feels really hard to play, that means your reed strength is too hard and you should go down a size or two. Here's an example of what it might sound like when your reed is hard and you're really gonna hear it on low notes because hard reeds and low notes do not go together very well at all. So take a listen to my low notes. Do you hear that really hard uh, articulation where the note doesn't want to come out and then it kind of furps and it's not solid? That is what happens when you have a hard read. Now I'm manufacturing that sound on my regular read just because I know how to make it sound like a hard read. If I was going to play it for real, they come out totally fine and I can subtone them. But if I had a hard read on, it would sound like this. You hear that like the, the air just kind of like is pushing in and you don't have any control over it? That's what it means when you have a hard read. The only thing that is good about a hard read is your altissimo comes out easier. Your altissimo notes, your high notes are gonna come out easier, but you do not wanna play a hard read just so your altissimo, altissimo notes come out easier. You wanna play a read that is just right and work on your altissimo so that your tongue gets in the right position and your air is moving correctly and they come out with no problem. You don't wanna play a hard read just for altissimo. Another question I get about reads all of the time is, should I switch reads depending on the type of song or music I'm playing? That's kind of a tough one. Yes, if the music is completely different, like if you're playing classical saxophone and jazz saxophone, you're gonna have two completely different setups. Some people have different setups for funk and jazz, but most of us, I do that, jazz and funk, I use the same setup for everything. So it depends on how different it is, 
Now, if you're asking, should I use a soft read when I play a ballad and a hard read if I play something funky? No, absolutely not at all. The best thing you can do is find the read for you that works for you and stick with that read for a while. Play it for three or four months, five months. Don't keep switching read sizes and read brands or types over and over every time you pick up your saxophone. If you do that, you're just asking for saxophone problems because you're never gonna zero in on your tone, your breath support, your airflow, and your sound because you keep changing a very important variable, actually probably the most important variable, which is your read. So once you find the read that works for you, play that read for three to six months, and then, not that specific read, but that brand of read, that type and size of read. And then, if you feel like you wanna shift it a little bit, go a half size in one direction or a half size in the other direction. But don't constantly use different size and type reads as you're trying to figure out what kind of read to play. Figure out the one that works for you and stick with it for a while, and that's gonna help you improve your sound and your tone the most. One of the biggest misconceptions about read strength is there is no size that's better than the other. So I will have beginner or early intermediate students that say they're aspiring to play a size three read. And I say, why do you wanna play a size three read? And they think that playing a stiffer or a harder read uh, makes them a better musician. That means they've been working harder and then they can play a harder read. That is not true at all. There is no better size. Some people play a four and they sound great and it works perfect for them. Some people play a one and a half, which I never could do that, but some people play that and it works for them. Most people are somewhere in between a two and a three, maybe a two and a three and a half. So I play a soft read and I have a very, very big sound. So the strength of your read doesn't really have anything to do with how good of a saxophone player you are. It just has to do with how you're putting your air through the saxophone and how it re relates and works with the rest of the equipment that you have. And a final question that I get all of the time is, should I use synthetic reeds or cane reeds? It's totally up to you. If you're a beginner or early intermediate, I strongly suggest using a synthetic reed because that eliminates the variable of, is the reed good or bad? That is something I didn't talk about earlier. If you get a box of Van Dorans and there are 10 reeds in the box, most likely all 10 of them are gonna play a little bit differently. They are not consistent. When you have a synthetic reed, I use a Legere signature, and I just started playing on Legere American Cut, which are brand new reeds. Um, they're super consistent. Every time I put one on, it sounds and feels the exact same way. Now, they are just like regular reeds where they're a little harder when you start playing them. You break them in for a week or two. They're good for a couple months, and then they die out, and the high notes get thin. So they are kind of react the same way as a regular reed. They last longer, and they're super, super consistent. So you're never wondering, do I have a bad read? So if you're a beginner or early intermediate, I say get a synthetic, make your life way easier. If you're a professional saxophone player or intermediate saxophone player, and you've tried synthetic reeds and you just don't like them, and you like a cane reed, that's totally fine. When it comes to reeds, it's 100% your own personal choice of what works and sounds the best for you. So there isn't really a best type of reed, whether it's cane or synthetic, and there isn't really a best brand of reed, whether you're playing Boston Sack Shop reeds or Van Doren uh, Green Box. However, no one should play an orange box Rico. Those are the cheapest and worst reeds. Don't play those, they're terrible. It's gonna make it way harder for you to play the saxophone. If you're a beginner saxophone player, we can narrow things down a little bit because you haven't developed the lip muscle yet to support a harder strength read. So if you're a beginner saxophone player and you're playing a Legere signature, you, start with, you should start with a two or a 2.25. Try one, if it's too soft or too hard, go to the other one. And if you're playing a cane read, like a Van Doren Purple Box, then you should uh, start with a 2.5 and kind of go from there. Uh, anyone else, at whatever level you're at, it's all gonna be dependent on your lip muscle, how fast your air is going, and what kind of mouthpiece and saxophone you have. So there is no answer to what size read or what strength read should I use. However, with all of this information, it should make it way easier to figure out which strength read is gonna work great for you. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you would like to get some structure in your saxophone playing, check out scottpaddocksaxschool.com. Thanks a lot.